All right, ladies and gentlemen, we should be back. We should be heading out to Jotunheim. Mm. What's going on? It is Wednesday. We are live. Mm -hmm. Had a little bit of a hiccup because I was testing things earlier. And, well, you know, Twitch doesn't really have a very simple switch. We're like, hey, don't broadcast to everyone and tell them we're live so we mm -hmm. can test out video stuff. YouTube, <laughs> however, has a button. I'm like, boom. Go ahead and have fun. What's up? <laughs> it's Wednesday. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Artharon. We're Hello, ready to do wise. that thing we do. It's gonna be terrifying. Eh, might as well. <laughs> yeah, we We're all here anyway, so yeah. okay. well, well, you missed out on the um excellent Well, I remember one time fixing somebody's computer and they were rude to me. Oh yeah, well I oh, remember yeah. fixing somebody's <laughs> computer and they were rude to me too, sharing those stories. Yeah. This happens. This is reality. Everyone's had that yeah. experience. Yes. I I was reminded of this. Not even from that, <laughs> it's just I posted that you know that dog picture. It was like holding the uh, thing. It was like, uh, please fix in the second frame. It was like no troubleshoot with a cross. Like, <laughs> no fix. troubleshoot, just fix. Yeah, just only fix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> that was a thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. But we do uh, have a uh, show. What's up? I, I do have one more story, and this one isn't mine. It was a co-worker, Dave, that told it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that uh, he was talking about, he was, you know, whinging about people at work like we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was with his mom, and his mom was like, oh, yeah. I see, at my work, one time, I I didn't know what certain parts of that software we use, what, what it does. So I just started clicking on things and seeing what happened, and I broke it. And then when uh, the IT guy came around, I told him I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dave was like, just tell him. It'll be faster. <laughs> you you got to deal with a very real thing, unfortunately. This is the human condition. No one wants to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to be called out. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, while I understand that, it's very important for the person who has to fix things to know something's wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't that right, Steve? <laughs> you walk in a room and tell I... slapping. Uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Get back to Hi, work. Steve. Hi, Steve husband. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, actually had a client that insisted on getting his uh, dot matrix printer set up and this has only been like five years ago under windows xp <laughs> and yes, i did it <laughs> yeah i did it because there's this one specific program he used um that was only only available in dos and he refused to go to the new version so i said well okay but it you know might take a while as long as you don't mind paying and and he goes well can you do it for me an hour i said Probably not, sir. <laughs> That's gonna get, gonna take quite a while. It could take a whole day. I mean, just getting the drivers, printer drivers, uh, <laughs> printer drivers and then and then do I am I gonna have to use uh, you know DOSBox or some virtualization tool? And I was trying to explain that to him, and he was getting, you know, he got was not upset, but said, "Well, okay," you know. I I said, "Well, as long as you don't." mind me you know doing it for a while and it took about it took about a day and a half and he paid me well and he was very happy with my work because I got it working I since found out that he had hired many techs to go over there and do it and they refused mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they refused to do it because it was ancient that's and the whole I, reason I mean I would and you in. don't want to have the liability of supporting Windows XP at this point in well, time this is the thing. yeah, As yeah. Somebody, a, a large, but I made like a thousand bucks large chunk and that guy's a moron <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I would have been like let it go buddy a large, a large chunk of my income is from after they've gotten done with corporate tech support <laughs> and expired contracts with Oracle I'm like yeah we, they told us to, well, we can't repeat what they told us. It's like, yeah, I'll come fix that. But with like personal computers, you got to be brave um, to deal with like one on one stuff because, man, yeah. you, you adopt every problem with that computer after mm -hmm. you've touched it. All of a it. sudden, everything is your fault. It's like, no, I didn't touch yeah. that. No, I didn't do that. No, that's. 
that was the last time I helped you. <sighs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that that and like mm-hmm. you know, in Jill's situation, if I'd walked in and the person was complaining, like, well, I need a time frame and all that, I'm like, okay. I would have given them my card and said, you call me after you take it to Best Buy and they tell you to throw it away. Yeah. And that, I'm that's charge essentially you double. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I was his last resort and he knew I, you know, collected vintage computers and, and used to, you know, been around a long time doing this. I wasn't just some, you know, young kid who had never even touched a dot matrix. So, but he he paid me for my money very well, paid me for my time very yeah, he paid well. You for even your though money. I, Money, yeah. <laughs> even though you know, I, I, Jill's I, I had, she's like, How much money? Do you need? <laughs> well, I had actually give you know, told him a few, I have about $200, and he gave me by the time we ended it all, it took about a day and a half, so he it was almost a thousand dollars by the time we got done. Yeah. So he was a good customer after that. <laughs> so. Never they made that much money, even when it's like recommendations from friends, it's like, Oh, yeah, he'll fix it. And then someone's like, how much do you charge? Yeah. Like, depends on how long it'll take. Like, do you think yeah. it'll take more than a day? No. How much do you charge for a day? It's like, 40 euros? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just fix stuff for free, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's what usually, you... if, if they're my friends, yeah, I'll just freaking do it. Just give me, okay, it's fixed. Go away. <laughs> Unless yeah. we run but... into what we were talking about, what I encountered the other day. It's like, don't yeah. argue yeah. with the person trying to help you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Or do, then the person leaves. <laughs> it's like, I'm not your family. I don't live next to you. I don't have to put up with you. I don't ever have to see you again. Bye. I was, um, also, one time I was alone at my desk. Someone walked up. It's like really furious. It's like, oh, my Outlook is giving me this error log. It's like, that's cool. Did you log a call? My Outlook isn't working. I can't send an email. Uh, did the online version stop working as well? Uh, I didn't try. No, you didn't. Mm. Well, have you tried to, um, I don't know, kill Outlook and start it back up again? <laughs> Look, I'm alone here. You have the option to go there, fix it yourself by turning it off and on again, or <laughs> you can keep standing there. So mm-hmm. <laughs> Then I got complained about, obviously. And, uh, well, at least then, you didn't but... finish it with, like, either way I'm enjoying myself here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, we get to have a, you know, get to give people a little bit of sass if they're, uh, if they just straight up walk up to our desks without logging a call. Uh, but then uh, my boss asked Dave to go and have a look, and she had not touched her computer. It was still standing there with Outlook open, and what he did was he killed Outlook, started it back up, and it worked. Hmm. Magic like, wizards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Darksiders had a bondage franchise pack. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. uh, is it does that include all three Dark Siders? I don't know. Hmm. I think I played a little bit of the, like the first Dark Siders because it worked for time for whatever reason my luck Dark Siders suit just doesn't run in any of my boxes. It's like no. I'm going to play that intro video, then I'm going to your desktop mm. as best I can do. <laughs> uh, I played... I tried to like the first uh, Darksiders on the uh, NVIDIA game streaming thing that they had on the Shield tablet. Because I had the controller as well. It's like, when it was free, it's like, okay, I'll give it a try. It's like, oh, look, it works. Wow, this game is boring. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't say that. Strider's gonna be mad at me now. (laughs) If he's done uh, eating his baguettes and cheese. (laughs) Man, he's busy setting up his hot Windows 7 computer right now. What are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's gotta get some real work done. He can't play around with Linux all the time. (laughs) That's definitely a thing. All right. We got three minutes before go time, Joe. I'm telling you that for okay. a reason. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go take care of things. <laughs> okay. Didn't you need to get up and walk away to do something? I do. I'm going to yeah, strand see, you. Here. I was, well, I was kind of waiting for you then. <laughs> so. Joe, you can lie to yourself all you want. 
I'm predictable with my time. Go ahead. <laughs> go, Joe. We're, we're getting the unfactorable out of the equation. <laughs> Into life train. Let's say do it, man. Windows is about to push out an update that is like estimated. And like a couple of percent is going to have like driver issues, which is going to be like 10 million boxes. Mm hmm. But they're pushing out a little bit. We're, we're going to push it out on the things we think kind of work. <laughs> also, prepare yourself. We got bad news. Um, we're not getting a 2080 Ti Super Duper. Thanks for asking. Didn't they say that? I thought they'd already mentioned that. It had, it had not been mentioned publicly. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but you really got to think about it. I mean, a Ti Super. I'm like, really? And like, yeah, that's too much even for us. And yeah, the, then the Titan people would get really pissed off because it would have been the third time in a row that NVIDIA had done that to them. <laughs> I think a lot of people, there's going to be a small section of Titan owners, but I think the vast majority of Titans are sold to people who need compute and don't want to spend the money on Quadros. Even though NVIDIA's like, quit doing that. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Here are the drivers you want. Naughty. <laughs> they are, man. They're like, that, that. NVIDIA's straight up like, that's cheating. Give us more money. Like, no. <laughs> Hi, uh, NVIDIA. We love you. But that's the thing. Uh, you'd think that was NVIDIA admitting defeat with a Titan V. Because it's like, yeah... It's a 5000 or 3000 or however many dollars it was at the time. Mm -hmm. But it's not a gaming card. It's only the fastest gaming card on the market, but it's not a gaming card. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, the last thing we heard about that card was it's like, hey, that super budget uh, 10 series card. Yeah, that doesn't have a Turing and VN Coke. Yeah, we put the one from that one in there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at it. It's glorious. Not really. <laughs> How retro, you hipster. <laughs> Your System 76 looks a little diseased, bro. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I could totally start up my um, work precision here and fire up the macOS VM that I got working. <laughs> you are like the type there, of person Mojave. Would, yeah. <laughs> uh, ad admittedly, this only started because uh, one of the directors at work has a MacBook and he outright refuses to use the laptop that he was issued from the IT department mm. and he only uses his Mac. So uh, he was running into a problem with, I think it was Skype for Business and it's like, uh, we don't have a Mac to tie and try and replicate that issue. And Dave was like, didn't you set up a DSXI box? Yes. Nope. Hold on. <laughs> you found the ISO, it's like, okay, install this. It's like, crap that works <laughs> this is true man also did you catch that extraordinarily vague response from amd when they're like hey so you're discontinuing radeon 7 and amd's like we're not answering <laughs> that <laughs> but yes it's like we still see the radeon 7 as a um Dude. high performance card for the gaming market or something they, they effectively <laughs> said it's still in stock <laughs> we're still selling them you can still yeah. buy them yeah <laughs> neo dodge bullet <laughs> uh, that's why you have like go ahead and buy them i mean just don't expect all that more yeah radeon 7 yeah, it performs about on par with a non-super uh, 2080, but it gets a bit toasty. A I, bit. I, I honestly wouldn't mind one for editing. Yeah, they're great Open for CL. that. 
<laughs> mm, that's fine. I just want that big chunk of video memory RAM. Oh, yeah, HBM2. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> trust me, I can make six gigs run out of memory in DaVinci quick. Um, yeah. <laughs> then we had to deal with the 2050s for $500. That was a tough two days, kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've even got to Michelle. the point of like, I haven't bought myself anything in a while. Well, I wanted to buy myself a processor for my own birthday, but Amazon says no. <laughs> hey, we didn't take your money, you peasant. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. Michelle. All right. Here. Vin's got to go do some things. But I got my Linux Academy mug. And I got my, actually, Linux Academy um, coaster, too, for it. <laughs> that we got from, for being the Linux Chicks of LA, actually, as they are our sponsor. As Sharon knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they give us tons of stuff. <laughs> Hello, sorceress. Hello, Linda. And Katana, it's like, y y yeah, yeah, but the code base that ESXi has uh, is the same, be it, you know, whichever operating system you happen to be running it on, or if you're just running ESXi as the hypervisor. Um, it's, um, which mm. means you can run a teeny tiny little SH script that's available through a multitude of websites <laughs> that unlocks that bit of functionality. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Alan, I've dealt with that too. <laughs> Katana. <laughs> yes, Katana, you didn't. <laughs> So yeah, we, we were actually managed to reproduce the issue and uh, it's fixed now because despite how much some people in that organization would like to say, it's like, yes, we have a unified system. We're all running the same across the whole, um, the whole of the uh, HE. No, no, we're not. We're really not. <laughs> I mean, that would make it great. That would make it so most of the issues were, if, you know, mm -hmm. we were seeing a bunch of people have the same issue, we know that it would be like <laughs> a issue above us. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Pedro at work, for sure. <laughs> like, oh, that's on fire. Not my problem. <laughs> Hello, Shay. <laughs> Commandante Che Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ellen, I've had that problem too. I I think uh, I noticed the most lat latency when I was going through a switch, an Ethernet switch. It seemed to really slow things down, but as soon as I unhooked the switch, it was better, but there was still some lat latency. Oh, no, see, uh, Katana, mm -hmm. if uh, we get anything from Apple, that virtual machine was set up for solely for mm -hmm. educational purposes and to uh, tell Apple that they can eat the proverbial bag of wieners. <laughs> Have you ever played around with Mac Jill? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember setting up, uh, yeah. well, the first second touch I set up was actually because my, um, university mm. professor that was teaching the operating systems course, it's like very first class. It's like, yeah, you can't have, um, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, all three of them running at the same time on a regular PC. It's like, this was in 2005. 
Mm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I have oh, to yeah? demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, then if you bring me that laptop that you have there in front of you with all three installed tomorrow, you can have whatever grade you want. It's like, okay. <laughs> hey, I would like to point out this isn't fair. I didn't have any professors that were that dumb. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's uh, how I got an 18 out of 20. Because if I um, if I wanted a 20 or a 19, I would have to uh, mm -hmm. go and orally defend my grade. <laughs> oh. I think the only thing I got a free pass on was um, it's undergraduate for. Uh, I'm not gonna probably will know the school anyway. One of my math <laughs> professors. Uh, I made the volleyball teams website. This was back in the 90s, kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, the next day it's like, knock, knock. There. <laughs> oh. Oh, I guess you can. <laughs> yeah, that to be one. fair, uh, um, x86 Mac wasn't as well known back in 2005 as it is today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were they even shipping risk in 2005? Not yet. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. wait, 2005. Uh, I think they, the G5 was still supported? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was supported, but were they even shipping anything? I don't <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. think around 2006 was the, I'd have to check, but I think that that was the year that I remember we were deprecating them at school. <laughs> no, I'm curious. Power PC. What year was it? Oh man, <laughs> oh, that's risk. The Xbox 360 was running a power PC. <laughs> <laughs> it was a power CPU. Yeah. It wasn't exactly yeah, the listen, same power PC architecture. You know what? Yeah, yeah. That, that, if I wanted to like try to win an argument, I would use that. But you got that. that that's fair enough. I mean, yeah. Still process. Yeah. Yeah. At least it wasn't as complex that it uh, made the Skyrim dragons fly backwards like the PS3 ah. one was. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was right in there. 2005, 2006. Yeah. And... The transition was complete by 2000, so Apple ships, so Wikipedia, you're not helping me here. <laughs> try to be Last clear. Last bit of shipping! Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking at one right now, G5. <laughs> uh, there was, and... I remember when Google Plus was still around, I was in the... <laughs> Okay, you Grandpa, yeah. did, did you have to log in for <laughs> both ways? I remember. Yeah, the I was in the Ubuntu Mate community, and there was someone that was running the, um, like the Power PC version of, uh, of it on uh, G5. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have Debian on all mine. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it works beautifully. <laughs> Those were uh, interesting machines. I mean, mm -hmm. they're still great to go around. Like, they're not bad to look at. I wouldn't cut one on. I don't hate the environment that much. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could dim some lights with those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Drinky time for me. Give me a sec. Okay. Let's just wait it out, man. <laughs> So is your new computer blowed up yet, Jill? No, it's it's been working beautifully. I just got a new RX 580, though, that I need to put in it. 
so... Wait, are you going to try it. to get it in before your end? Or? Yeah. <laughs> well, I put it in another one of my test machines. Just well, that's to... no fun. Put yeah. it in another one. <laughs> put two of them in it. <laughs> no, but I was so impressed with the uh, 560 that I went ahead and got the, four, the 580 with 8 gigs of RAM. I mean, if you're looking... Mm -hmm. Because they're dirt cheap right now. I mean, there's no reason yeah. not to get one if you yeah. like, ah, oh, I want to play with one. 200. Oh. Yeah. Steve, you have a vivid imagination, young man. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> so, what are we trying to communicate? Terrorizing indigenous life? Unicorn's busy trying to do its own thing, and you're like trying to forcefully domesticate domesticate unicorns into servitude. Is that, is that what you're trying to tell me, Steve? I don't know if Jill does that. Oh, <laughs> but I do unicorn. You see, it <laughs> you having having that that doesn't bother me, man. Having that. Like, oh, yeah, here. It's right here. <laughs> that, that just leads me to believe that you keep that there for a reason. Like, there's other I things can't. you do. And you're like, oh, yeah, I better have this handy. And it lights up. No, I, I've kept it around for the Thursday stream and Friday foobar. <laughs> so. I don't know what you got going on Thursdays, man, but... <laughs> Jordan wants me to wear my patch the next time we we do our RPG. <laughs> yeah, I know we got a bet going. Whether or not she will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it'll continue at some point. <laughs> <That's> warm. <laughs> you 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 you've been there a year and you're already properly British. <laughs> I was never that big a fan of the heat. The only reason I could tolerate it was because uh, it was dry. <laughs> I thought it was because you grew up living in Portugal. Yes, dry. On the coast. <laughs> eh, where I grew up, it wasn't on the coast. In fact, there was like a mountain range okay, in between. Okay, all right, all right. Humor me. Humor, humor the people at home. How many years did you live in a place where you could see the, I don't know what's the word I'm looking Oh, ocean. Uh, mm -hmm. I lived there for like two and a half years. <laughs> Acclimate much? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Poor Linda, your magical unicorn powers have disappeared. <laughs> okay, <laughs> looks like AV Sync is good. For anyone at home, if you're wondering, if you have a 256 frame size set on your network, and you're doing 32-bit float with your audio processing, and tying that directly back in to Jack with OBS, you're looking at about a hundred millisecond mm. delay. You're offset. Is it that bit, that much? A <laughs> hundred milliseconds? Yeah, <laughs> that's not much. Not point one of a second. No. <laughs> I mean, how many? More hundreds do you need for a full second? <laughs> I was just, you know, it's, it's much. Uh, uh, for okay, being run uh, locally, anyway. 100 mil. This is going through audio processing, sweetheart. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> You're running through <laughs> gate, noise filtering, active noise filtering, a compressor, and a deesser, plus the routing. Then getting to this box and getting routed. Okay. <laughs> Plus we're going through a Netgear router. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, that's where the problem is. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, between that, but once it gets over to Jackbox, it's at like a 10 gig direct mm -hmm. attached copper link. So we're good on that. Oh, there is audio processing. You ever heard Jordan without a limiter behind him? Tune in to the um, Vermintide stream. Vermintide. <laughs> yeah. 
Whenever Jordan talks, that little k you hear is Jordan clipping. <laughs> it's not his fault. I'd rather him clip because he's excited. He's animated. Which, that's fine. <laughs> we use compression. <laughs> Which... Jordan, it, everyone's getting... I'm getting better at dialing in because I've switched from analog compressors to these digital compression, so... Everyone does good. I think Pedro gets the gold star because he finally quit laughing directly into the microphone. Oh, you did, you know, <laughs> beat me over the head with it. <laughs> I did. It was my mission. I was like, so, Pedro, how you doing? Quit laughing in the microphone. So, anyway... Um, I, I pretended I ran art. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would have worked better. Well, I, I just summoned my inner art user, just brought up like that randomly. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of you have the Jordan experience live. First person, mm -hmm. FPJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay. I think we're about ready to do a show. Okay. Yes. Daddy-o. <laughs> Neato. First of the dead. Watch the two people who get that reference. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, I, I was uh, like, just rum rummaging my mind palace and just like, no, we don't have anything for that. <laughs> you Someone you. ought to know. <laughs> Oh, this is the internet, man. Enough. Even if they don't, they tell you they will, and they'll explain a little bit to you. <laughs> it's like an Amazon review that starts out with, I have 35 years in the IT industry, and I'm about to explain something completely wrong. <laughs> like, whew. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was on uh, Linux and Score Gaming, and it had nothing to do with it. Don't read and... Reddit comments. No, it wasn't the comment. It was the post itself. Uh, <laughs> like first three words, I run, uh, I run Arch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm wondering. It's like, what kind of uh, distro should I run on this computer and this with these specs and whatnot? It's like, oh my god, <laughs> these people still exist. Well, they do then. <laughs> It, it's gotten to the point where it's like a self-referential thing. It was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> by the way, I run it. It's like, yeah, but you do that anyway. It's, that's why it's not funny. <laughs> I run Fedora. <laughs> Fedora. I run Solus. All oh, right. <laughs> this, this is going to be me at the DMV tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> oh, boy, that's fun. <laughs> also, I got to do like the extensive paperwork. That involves like my like real ID stuff, so I have to bring my naturalized <laughs> citizenship thing. And so, if they end up um, deporting me, if I'm not around Friday or Saturday, just heads up, just go ahead and continue without me. Okay. Because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> dealing with that. Plus, I'm going to be like, don't snap at them. <laughs> Remember when I was talking about being highly allergic to incompetence? I'm going to be at the DMV. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Most state owned businesses. It's gonna be fun. I got everything ready. I have like the stack of things. I I am gonna bring three different passports, and I even have like notarized, you know, my birth certificates. Not America, but I even I man, I got everything covered. That's good. So okay, this is where we're gonna get into <laughs> an argument because they're gonna try to pull something on me. I know it. This is gonna be like trip one. This is gonna be a multi-part series, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, if I'm still here tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> All right. Uh, so security office, dude. All right. A 
Cecilia <laughs> Linda. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Oh, worst case scenario, it's just like next week I might be doing the sh uh, show at Pedro's place. <laughs> 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 ah, there's the bandwidth for it. <laughs> also, Pedro might get an upgrade in his bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's locked. That's loaded. And. Mm. Put her game face on real serious professional yeah. journalism. Ow! Hey? Mm. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no one told me it was going to be like this. <laughs> oh! I, no, it's not. I just thought we'd surprise the audience with it every time. <laughs> like, Wait, what? What am I watching? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take a midweek break, and actually we're just going to sit around and talk about some of the things that we want to talk about going on in the world of Linux, open source, um, Raspberry Pis, that's coming up later. Um, I'm Vin Stone, that mm -hmm. is Joe Bryant, <laughs> and the man on the island, uh, that is one Pedro Mateus. Hello. You, you have to we'll, we'll have to cut Pedro a little slack he's in that horrible situation of like I've ordered the new Ryzen processor and they haven't shipped nah. it yet <laughs> they still haven't shipped it it's been a, like almost a week Dude, we were talking about before we went live that AMD trust me we'll, we'll get to the news thing but we want to cover this real quick is there's no place there's no local shops that have it in stock no no yeah. they have the 3600 the non-X version, it's like the 3600X, the 3700X, and the 3900X. Nowhere to be found. And AMD, not AMD, we love you, AMD. Amazon <laughs> has did the thing of, like, well, you can cancel your order. <laughs> yeah, we haven't taken your money yet. We, you can just cancel your order. It's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> can you get the thing to me by the date that you say on the page there? It's like, yeah, that's that's... You know, that's when you're lined up. You're that's when your place in the queue will come. It's like, fine, whatever. Sunday it is. It'll be good, man. Don't worry about it. Amazon, Amazon's got you. I, I got faith in Amazon. Uh, anyway, that's what Pedro's been up to. Jill, you have paragraphs of things you've been doing. What have you been doing? Uh, yeah. Well, I've been sharing the Linux Gamecast love as the community organizer in Morales R. So I had a great time with Chris Fisher on Jupiter Broadcasting's The Friday Stream, where I gave out Linux game keys to two lucky winners of an online Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game. That was really a lot of fun. And we had a great conversation about our first vehicles, of which I couldn't drive. It was my Chevy Nova. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also, also had fun Saturday on Big Daddy Linux Live once again. So I'm doing that monthly as well. So just... Had a very nice. busy week with podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> this is a beautiful thing about Jill has actually this thing called like not a chaotic work schedule and she can do things like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to show up <laughs> and give away free keys and spread yeah. cheer. Yeah. I, I, I spread cheer. I try to spread cheer, but people can. <laughs> It's kind of sad. <laughs> I try to spread cheer and people look at me funny. <laughs> I'll get back to you that on that one Saturday. Um, okay. <laughs> man, I've been um, playing around a lot of well, outside of my upcoming adventures um, at the DMV. That's going to be fun. Uh, looking, actually, I went ahead and ordered one. Are you like this? Do you order stuff off eBay regularly, Pedro? regularly well like mm -hmm. once a month yeah once a month yeah. okay you, you're gonna feel for that maybe you at home kind of feel the same way if i'm ordering off amazon even if amazon costs more for stuff and i go look at the stuff i plan on buy it usually has refurbished or renewed next to it because that's how i roll and um but with amazon you get the wrong thing or whatever you're like you take it back and it's not a problem mm -hmm. ebay is going to be you know per seller do you yeah. need descriptions like nuclear launch codes because you're looking for the OPS. This is not the real thing. It's just a picture of it. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, yeah. You have yeah. to. <laughs> Man, I think I tracked one down. I'm looking for, um, I have an ancient Nikon digital camera. How ancient is it? D60. It's the budget version of the D80 from oh, 2004, yeah. whenever that came out. So I found the body on Amazon for, for a 3400, which would be interesting. Because uh, I want to do some more stuff. I made a video for like uh, replacing the tube and a preamp for like the 10 people who ever need but the teardown and the setup to do that took longer than mm -hmm. doing the video. And I'm talking about recording and uh -huh. editing, uploading it. So I wanted something like that. And I have a bunch of glass for it. And, you know, I'll probably use a prime lens or anything like that. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Hopefully that'll show up before the end of the week. But I don't know if like all the power yeah. adapters and stuff I need. So stay tuned for Adventures oh, in Photography. Adventures. <laughs> it's got an HDMI out. I guess I could technically use it as like a camera, like video camera, but I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Stay tuned. We're going to make a video of that. How do you connect it to cool. Linux? Plug. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it doesn't work immediately after you plugged it in. Yeah, sorry. I got to <laughs> make that video I want to do. It's like, oh, how do you connect a multi-channel professional interface? Just... USB plug. How do you connect an HDMI video encoder? Connected. How do you connect a 10 gigabit Ethernet? Stick it in. <laughs> plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> right. <Hey. laughs> Install a wireless Xbox. Plug it in. And yes. I want to do an entire like supercut video of that answering all the questions. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> anyway, something that is not terribly brilliant is evil gnomes. Mm -mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. My genuine, genuine spy one. Yeah, this <laughs> just, happened this morning. <laughs> yeah. Mike hit me up on Twitter, and despite him giving me so much trouble about my fabulously black shirts that I wear, um, <laughs> this uh, since it's a little bit, it's a new backdoor implant, and it actually spies on Linux desktop, and it does more than you know, like oh, it's you know capturing. It's this is doing keystroke logging, screenshots. Um, what else can this thing do, man? Is there anything? Audio. Can't... Oh, yes. Audio. Yeah. And this is legit. This isn't theoretical. It's like this is something that we've actually found. And it shows up in the form of, well, it disguises itself as a legitimate gnome extension. So, okay. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, sound image. Um, it's got a bunch key. Oh. Yeah, this is real. This mm. is bad kids. Mm -hmm. So and it's that we know the attack vector and we know what it does. It's like this. This is an actual Linux vulnerability. This is an actual Linux malware example, not whatever the what are they called it? Hidden wasp. His been wa wasp. Yeah. His been yeah. wasp. <laughs> His been wasp. His, His been wasp. <laughs> are you? Are, 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 yeah, yes, I practice wasp. His been dream. His been dream. Yeah, so you know, many of us who use no use extensions to fix all the things and, and the things that are missing. So hey, uh, hey, make Jill. sure. You Everyone <laughs> who uses GNOME uses extensions because the base desktop exactly. environment is crap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So you can make sure that you're um, uh, check that if you you have been infected or not, and it's in the show notes, and it, it's not hard to find. It's in uh, Home Cache, GNOME Software, GNOME Shell Extensions Directory, and it's the GNOME Shell EXT. <laughs> yeah, and uh, make sure yeah. to check your cron tabs as well because mm. that's how we yes. set up persistency. To yeah. run every minute. <laughs> See, if every minute I saw a cron go off, it's like, what? What's going on? <laughs> Did you, I get suspicious if I see too much hard drive activity. I'm like, that's an H top. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something you can it's look for. It's like, yeah. <laughs> if that bottom LED turns on, it's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was just 100% curious about that. Um, <laughs> so the moral of the story is that uh, watch net looks for a free extension that you downloaded off mega probably not real um <laughs> yes probably but hey man, no <laughs> extensions is there anything they can't do i mean real simple <laughs> me you know the xfc for zealot and be like i got a simple fix for you but it that would be silly and then i remember that uh yeah just 
keep an eye out for that. That that that's like Windows level malware type. Yeah, stuff, right? because uh, yeah. GNOME extensions are that thing that okay, there's the official place where you can get them, which is the recommended place and where you should get them. Uh, but then there's a bunch of like other projects that's like, oh, I made a new one. It's not on the GNOME extensions yet, but you can build it and run it yourself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people mm -hmm. still have that mentality. It's like, okay, yeah. I'll just build this, mm -hmm. and when you build it, you got spyware. NPM install would like a word. <laughs> <laughs> JavaScript developers. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let's talk about some uh, laptops. You, you're the laptop human here. I am. I guess I am. Uh, I like laptops, and uh, one of my favorite laptops is a Dell XPS. Having had a chance to use one of the ninety three sixties, oh no, don't for buy me. a while. Yeah, uh, it's uh, you they're know what? really I, I'm, really I'm nice. Take a bigger issue with uh, dude's got an outdoor patio stool indoors. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he walked outside, brought it back, and put the laptop on. It's like, cool, then put it back outside. Uh, but yeah, uh, the author of this particular Medium article uh, is saying that he had some Linux woes with his XPS, despite having bought the uh, version that came with Linux pre-installed. Uh, the issues that he had were that it came with a killer Wi-Fi NIC, and yeah, it comes with Ubuntu 18.04 pre-installed. And um, it was the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth that also dropped off uh, at one point, which, yes, that is a bug with some killer nicks. It's the power savings. If you get rid of those, they'll go away. Yeah. And a couple of others. And he, you know, as a responsible Dell owner, he called Dell support. And it's like, yeah, this thing isn't working. And they said, it's like, well, um, that is uh, the most up-to-date version. You could just wait on the updates. It's like, okay, what if I want to install Windows? Well, you can't. We're not giving you the Windows image because you bought the Linux version. So now he feels a little bit betrayed. And, uh, dude, if Dell support refuses to support you, nuke the default install and set your own preferred distro. Just do it by yourself. It'll be a learning experience. You'll actually learn a lot. And... As someone who used an XPS for a while, I can tell you for a fact, those are very nice Linux laptops. Uh, it really does suck that you spent a ton of money and now Dell support just outright refused to uh, mm -hmm. do their job. But welcome to the real world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, <laughs> I've uh, read other complaints about the XPS 13. I was, I was curious, so I, I went and looked at that. But the complaints um um don't outweigh the all the positives from this laptop and we have even featured news stories here on lww about that about how much people love their xps 13 laptops and that it is one of the flagship linux laptops yep. and uh yeah they they nailed it with that one <laughs> so i was really yeah. sorry that this writer had a you know had issues <laughs> So what's the deal? Did uh, I didn't get a chance to read this article? Did it come with Linux preloaded? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and it, it uh, has issues. <laughs> yeah. So what what was this problem with support exactly? Uh, support couldn't figure out the issues. Okay. They gave him thirty he, days. Yeah, yeah, they gave him thirty days, and um, well, thirty days from the date of uh, invoice, not okay. from the date of receiving the laptop. Mm. So, yeah, you couldn't just, you know, return it. One thing that stuck out when I was just going through that, um, what you guys were um, telling me about, it was 1804. Is there anything with that XPS that couldn't be solved by 1910? Uh, no. You don't even need to do that. You just no. uh, enable the hardware enablement stack, the HWE uh, stack. will bring down new kernel, new Mesa, and a bunch of new other packages, okay, and it will fix most this. of those. Okay, there's that, then... <laughs> Put this stick in a USB port and cut it on. <laughs> See, that goes into what I say. Just set up your own distro. <laughs> It'll fix most of the issues. And yeah, the ones that you can't, you can just Google for them and then fix them yourself. Learning experience. <laughs> yeah, I see Dak uh, has one. That is yep. the thing. <laughs> I'm going to say Dell 
if you're buying, you know, Linux support and Dell, if you know, if you already know how to Linux mm -hmm. this, you already know how to Linux bra. Yeah. Good. I mean, if you're looking for the, like a longer support and something like that, because you're going to pay extra for the support, get a system 76. Yes. <laughs> get a tuxedo. A get tuxedo. an intro wear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get somebody who specializes is like, this is what we do. We get up and eat this in the morning. And that yep. didn't come out right anyway. So <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So speaking of Ubuntu 18.04, yay! Now the latest NVIDIA graphics drivers can be installed directly in Ubuntu 18.04 LTS using the software and updates additional drivers menu. And now this is really awesome because there's no more need to install a PPA or download the NVIDIA driver manually from the NVIDIA website. That's just, this is so awesome and so wonderful. And, you know, Popey has been talking about Ubuntu doing this for quite some time now. So I'm so happy they finally launched this. And uh, of course, this comes in uh, at the heels of System76 Pop OS did this by offering their NVIDIA drivers a specific ISO. And now the rest of the distros will definitely fall sweet. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> sweet. Sweet. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, see, it only see, took them is, how is many years? Fall sweet. Suit. Well, the sweet. I've heard it sweet as well. <laughs> follow suit. Suit. <laughs> you follow <Okay>. suit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Steve's husband can correct me, can verify that. <laughs> yeah, Steve's husband. Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, only took him how many years? Uh, how long has uh, Ubuntu been around and people have been asking for a really easy way uh, to um, install the NVIDIA drivers? Because, well, let's be honest, there's been a ton of articles from tech journalists and uh, like hobby bloggers is like, oh yeah, Linux, you can do everything, but you need to go into the command line and going to the command line feels like going back to the 90s. We still see those articles to this day. And, you know, being the user-friendly distribution, or at least that's what they're attempting to be, I think. I'm not sure anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, you'd think that they would have been the ones to come out with, it's like, okay, you can First, use the, yeah. like, up-to-date mm -hmm. NVIDIA drivers um, on the LTSs, which yet, I don't know, in my head it's like, why wasn't this already a thing? Why did it take them so long? One of the things I saw, I forget who it was, it might have been on Twitter, and I'm like, well, we weren't fully aware that people wanted, you know, they were like looking for maximum compatibility. So that was one of the justifications for shipping, you know, older long-term drivers, which I get. But the option is like, but in addition to that, it should be a click away to... Yeah, it's like, okay, ship with the 340 or the, yeah. I don't know, 390 mm. versions of the drivers. Just let people move up to the 430s if they want. It, it makes perfect sense. Anyway, I, <laughs> this is not just with Ubuntu. I mean, anything that is running off that PPA, I mean, so yeah, with like your mints and stuff like that, all that. Mm -hmm. But this is good, and I, I've never understood... Actually, I've never been a fan of the argument. I'm like, well, I had to open a command line. I'm like, okay, so in Windows, you don't have to go to a website, download and zip file, decompress that, install that, click the next button a billion times, and hopefully... <laughs> oh, yes, and read but it's a like GUI! I know, yeah. but that makes me feel like I'm going back to play school. <laughs> Talk about going back to the dark ages. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think it's really good because everyone can experience the raging speed that is that NVIDIA, just that NVIDIA PPA. It's, that is the one that I can hit that I know I can get up and make tea. Yep. Yep. Every, every, uh, this is a true story at the end of the day. Anyway, so a uh, little bit more news mm -hmm. from Hong mm -hmm. Ubuntu. Uh, Fedora is disabling the Snap plugin for GNOME software. And your first thoughts like, well, it wasn't like, out of the box in the first no, place. No, it's not there by default. No, it's not. But it's going to be completely disabled in Fedora 31. And there's like, hey, man, we're not a huge fan of testing this in production in the first place. So it's just not going to be there. And um, they cited a few things like snaps, you know, 
they get updated in the background, you know, behind GNOME Software's back, and uh, even the GNOME Software team, I went and dug around. They're thinking about just dropping Snap support. Well, they're having a conversation about it, and, like, at the end, well, they're like, okay, we'll deal with this later on. It's not that they have a problem with Snaps. No. This, this is, there's no Snap hate here at all going on. This is everyone going, we're going to do your own Snap store. We all know this. And I'm like, mm. yeah. So there's like, let's not, you know, the GNOME teams, like it's just a bunch of extra code at that point. We don't need to bother maintaining that if Snaps are going to have its own thing. Well, it's, there's no hate from GNOME, but there was a lot of uh, hate from Fedora, especially yeah. if you uh, mm. enabled... Um, snaps because snaps have that weird behavior especially in the gnome software thing which if you look for something uh for a bit of software that's available both as a uh, like an rpm or a snap then gnome software would prefer the snap and when you clicked on the application that you wanted to install it would install the snap version instead so a lot of people weren't happy because all of a sudden the gnome system monitor uh took two seconds to open instead of just opening like it's supposed to. And Look at, mm. quit being a negative, Nancy. Look at the positive <laughs> side. It's easy to find the snaps. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. You can tell it's like, why are you taking so... Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things that brought up, uh, they brought up in the article is like, uh, sandboxing in snaps is still not working. Is that just in Fedora? Well, it's Fedora or in general. because, you know, <laughs> they got the uh what's it security thing that everyone disables like oh, se linux that's the that's my <laughs> that's my sweetheart right there i lasted four <laughs> days which is a record for me on fedora <laughs> basically you can get uh, se linux to behave if you run it for like a week make sure to start every single application that you use everything i know and... i needed to know about se linux is the fact that it ships with an application called se linux troubleshooter mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> like understood yeah. <laughs> it's like the bug reporter. It's the second thing that goes away. Uh, <laughs> and in all fairness, I think everybody tries to live with SE Linux for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, on uh, one of the, the Precision laptop, it's still there. It's still active because I'm not running Steam on it. Because if I was running Steam on it, I would have already gone, you know what, F this. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Admittedly, if it was a work machine, it would stay there and I would live with it. But given the choice, yeah, yeah I'm cool. <laughs> but yeah, it, even uh, like the, if you go down into the comments of the uh, OMG Ubuntu mm -hmm. article, it's like, oh, everyone seems to uh, be a little too keen to say, why don't you just, you know, uh, uninstall snaps and then there's a linux user that is like the first thing i do on ubuntu is uninstall snaps like my man <laughs> uh sudo <laughs> apt purge snap star mm -hmm. goodbye <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah you know and fedora users can still install snaps via the command line as long as of course the core snap d package remains available and also, a new Snap store by Canonical is in the works, and Fedora users will be able to install Snaps from there. So, for those who use Snaps under Fedora, no worries. <laughs> yep, that's yeah. um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, a Snap store is a better place. Yeah, than it GNOME is software. Yeah, because then mm -hmm. you end up with like the confusion of is this the Snap or is the real version? Yeah, either really make that. Very obvious you're about to install a snap. If you want the native package, click here. Like, okay, I'll click there instead. <laughs> I mean, we should say non-containerized version. <laughs> See, I just saved you from having to write that <laughs> comment. <laughs> <sighs> okay, man. Uh, let's pick on Fedora for a little bit because yeah. uh, <laughs> they deserve it. I, in this case, they do. And they've kind of addressed it in Fedora Magazine with an article called mm. What is Silver Blue? Question mark, to which I said, if we're going to be honest, and the Silver Blue web zone doesn't do an incredibly good job at exactly explaining what Silver Blue is. You can read over and you're like, oh, okay, what is it just a different, what is it exactly? What does it actually mean? Well, the term Silver Blue, uh, in short, doesn't have any hitting meeting. Well, okay. 150 word, pff, 
that doesn't even explain what it is. Come on. Mm. Am I, am I right by saying this, Pedro? If I, if I was going to have like short mm. story, this, this is like flat pack, the dust drill, right? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jill brought up a good point. Jill, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> yeah. The, to me, this reminds me of Intel's Clear Linux. You know, yep. the Fedora desktop <laughs> OS that containerizes all the things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. And if you, uh, one of the things that they say is like silver blue, it works in a way similar to, well, I guess the closest one is uh, Chrome OS, actually, like the Atomic yeah. updates, because if you get an update, it doesn't actually update any of the software in what's currently running. What's currently running is an image that gets loaded uh, at uh, boot time. So basically what Silverblue does is something very similar. It uh, If you run an update or if you change some of the core packages around, it updates the image, and once you reboot, you'll be running the new version. Which then led me to continue reading. It's like, oh, but we have uh, the traditional six months uh, release cycle, uh, with which will have a each version will be supported for nine months. It's like, um, okay, but why though? If you're already if you're doing atomic updates like Chrome OS style updates, why have a traditional release model? Why do you hate freedom, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate freedom. It's just why though? <laughs> Straw man, gets me up. Um, I saw that Arthur and he threw a thing in our show notes. Um, my beautiful party mm -hmm. patrons. Uh, you can do that. Mentioning that Fedora is um looking at not no longer shipping i six eighty six with like kernel packages and stuff like that. Do you think is Silverblue still gonna have that option? to maintain that do you think they'll keep it or i mean if there's a bit of software that gets bundled up and uh into a flat well, pack, what i'm trying to say is not. it'll be easier to maintain that functionality oh yeah with silver mm. yep it, yeah, it, yeah it, definitely it, like jill mentioned uh, most of it comes down uh in a container form mm. a great deal of them are uh flat packs uh it's the one thing that isn't containerized is like the core operating system, which they make sure to point out that uh, Silverblue is not the same as Fedora core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so basically, this is more like a desktop version of like Fedora core OS. Yeah. Yes. But with no. the virtualization. Yeah. Analogies, baby. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's like radical the oversimplification. Fedora, Help me out. Fedora version of Nick sauce. I don't like Nix's sauce. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Moving on. <laughs> okay, so going from uh the freedom to the proprietary. Let's say you want to run the proprietary NVIDIA drivers um, on your Optimus laptop. Like, you know, if you have the dedicated GPU and you want to make use of it, chances are you kind of want to. But there's no real easy way to do it with uh, Fedora in the same way that Ubuntu does it, which is by using NVIDIA Prime. Uh, you can use Bumblebee, but that means that both video cards are always on at the same time. But the fine folks uh, at, well, I guess Magmast is the uh, repo owner, uh, they created Fedora Prime. And Fedora Prime is exactly what it sounds like. It lets you use NVIDIA Prime uh, to shut down the uh, dedicated GPU and only use the Intel one. Or if you want to use the dedicated GPU, then the G uh, dedicated GPU is the one that you use for everything. Mm -hmm. So it works the same way that uh, if you do a like uh, out of the box install of Ubuntu Mate, uh, you get a little thing on the tray yeah. that lets you choose between the two um, GPUs. And it's when you pick the other one, it goes, okay, you need to like log out and log back in to enable the XOR config and bring the device up. And it works. Uh, there's nothing like that on Fedora until now. Uh, this one is not as out of the box as uh, that Ubuntu, teeny tiny little Ubuntu um, program, but it gives you very similar functionality. So 
That's good. <laughs> so this is Bumblebee for Fedora, right? Yeah. No. The Bumblebee well, for it's... Fedora is a completely different thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, actually. <laughs> well, you're confusing me, Jill. Is it or is it not? No. Well, it is. It's just an alternative way to do it, and it's easier. <laughs> Later. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> The way that Bumblebee works, and as much as I wish it worked the same way as uh, the Optimus functionality does on Windows, it doesn't, because you need to have both the Intel and the NVIDIA cards running at once. It's just that the NVIDIA card doesn't get used unless you run it with the Prime Run command mm. or the Opti Run command. And the um, with NVIDIA Prime, you just switch between the two cards. You just have to log out and back in. So what you're telling me is okay. just mm -hmm. always run with the um, discrete graphics on. <laughs> yeah. That's how most people end up doing it, yeah. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Hey, maybe you can do it on Endeavor OS, the Arch-based distro that we've talked about. Yes, uh, it is the continuation of the uh, now defunct Entergos, and I'm totally going to start calling it Ender Endeavorous <laughs> uh, because that's how it's spelled. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, it's basically the community that, um, that was using uh, Antergos uh, and they wanted the distro to continue. And they got together and they said that they were going to be releasing something very soon. And well, here it is. It's the very first stable release of Endeavorous. And you can go there, download it if you're a big fan of Antergos. You can keep that uh, dream alive, you know right up until Manjaro mm -hmm. decides to eat uh, whatever breakfast you happen to bring in today, because yes, better goes, it tried to do like the user-friendly thing for Arch, um, but then Manjaro ca came in and ate their cake. Jill? Yeah, well, I was really <laughs> impressed with how fast, considering that in May we talked about the spirit of the Interagos project will continue on in a new distro called Endeavor. And uh, it was really awesome because the call from the, the Linux community and Interagos community for support came through really quickly, too. I was really impressed. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and I, it runs really nicely, too. <laughs> I hope they do something to stay relevant because it's like they got to be they got to do something different. Otherwise, they're just going to languish there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Always the optimist, that boy. Um, <laughs> so if I if I get to if I do this once in a um, VM, I yeah, you can claim to have arch. installed okay. an arch. All right, yeah. well, I, no, 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 run oh. arch, run arch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Okay. <laughs> Teleport. Uh, one thing that's always been a problem for networks is sending files over the local one. Maybe question mark. Mm. Has that been a problem? I, uh, allegedly. Um, well, according to uh, Julian, it has been. So <laughs> he has created Teleport. It's a native GTK3 app. Good on that. Uh, to effortlessly share files over the local network. <laughs> so, yeah, it's supposedly a replacement for, you know, sneaker net. Like, you know, your USB key, or I would call it Google Drive Net because you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sending my data bits to a server across the country to get it on the <laughs> laptop next to me seems to work pretty good. Yeah. It's available as a flat pack. Uh, you can throw it on there. And so this is just like pushing it, right, Pedro? Oh, yeah. This is straight up just file pushing. Uh, yeah. I see the appeal. It's like, okay, you don't have to have an FTP server running on every single box, so you can just go to your file explorer and type FTP, whatever. Uh, or NFS, you don't have to type NFS, whatever. Or SSHFS, so you go to your terminal and you type SSHFS. The point is, uh, we've <laughs> moved on from file pushing, or at least I thought so. Because yeah. as it stands, um, yeah, even SSHFS is more useful in the way that it sends you, uh, it lets you, even SCP, SCP lets you uh, send uh, or fetch multiple files at once, and this one only lets you do one at a time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, well, <laughs> it definitely reminds me of the old days of sharing files between PCs via a single Ethernet or USB cable. Remember those days? 
except mm -hmm. a more modern version using notifications. And you don't have to have the physical cable. <laughs> but in the future, Teleport will be able to send multiple files and folders and have native Android, Mac OS, iOS, and Windows apps. So that that's pretty cool, actually. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, yeah. If you can make it that easy, uh, honestly, the easiest thing is something like Google Drive. For me, all these boxes have you know just for the network, the local network, um, SSH. So mm -hmm. I just Thunar, and you know every one of these boxes has a save folder with the save credentials of SFTP. Boom, you get your nice little drag and drop GUI because I have to do a very roundabout. Like when I get done with the show today, I'll have 15 gigs of uh, audio for my door that I have to get off Jackbox and put it over on the thread ripping box to get everything exported out. Yeah. And I was just like, click, drag, drop, done. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is like, I would like to, here, here's what I'd like, an easy way to send links outside of like having to Google Messenger yourself. <laughs> You're just like, text yourself. Here's, yeah, this, is, this is the way to do it. Uh, you know, I'm talking about like getting it to your Android device. I'm like, oh, I want to watch this, but I want to watch it on the tablet, and I don't want to have to look it up again. Yeah, there, there was Push Bullet. Uh, I think they're still around. Uh, that, that lets you do that. That was one of the functionality that they had. But then yeah. they started it's like, oh, yeah, you, you want to keep doing that, you know, that one thing that um, people used it for, which was to send like videos and whatnot to a from the desktop uh browser mm -hmm. to the mobile device yeah you're going to have to pay us money for that and Dude. people went uh, nope that, that, <laughs> google google yeah. take uh, if you could just take like 10 minutes off being evil got an idea right click on a youtube video from my desktop and give me an option to send a device yeah just boom and it just give because you do it when I install stuff. You give me a list of all the tablets in this house, and, mm -hmm. I, and I just pick it. Just do that, so it'll start playing. That'd be awesome. Then you can totes go back to being evil. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> like ten minutes. Get that done. All right. Uh, the fun is back in three D. Yeah. So Blender two point eight point eight zero release candidate is it now available for you to download and you know we've been following the blender 2.0 2.80 beta and now we have the release candidate which is really awesome and as we've talked about before this new version has a completely new user interface with major changes i can't stand it i don't like it this does not look like <laughs> developer ui oh well it's the, <laughs> it looks it's, like photoshop yeah <laughs> Well, they were trying to be in line with the other major 3D software. I was going know. to say 2004. <laughs> <proprietary>. uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 yeah, they're, they're trying to have the look and feel of the 3D Studio Max and uh, Mayas of the world. And it has a new uh, physically based time, real time renderer called EV, which works great. And um, the new uh, 2D animation grease pencil is really amazing and the ray tracing and render engine cycles now renders 30 percent faster and lets you combine gpu and cpu rendering and this is the first definitely a first in the industry and yeah this what was really what i was really excited about was the opencl gpu rendering times have greatly improved which will help make opencl gpus amd radions a much more compelling option now which is really, really wonderful. And I tested this on my AMD RX 580, and it, it rendered so much faster than uh, previously on AMD hardware. Nice. I was really <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I like it. I'm really down with awesome. it. Looking at the UI, mm -hmm. it definitely came kicking and screaming into like early to mid 2000s. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge fan <laughs> of that. And uh, I, same thing. I mean, trust me, you think... This UI is bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, roll it back. It, it, <laughs> the current UI, the brand new hotness, that that just mm -hmm. makes it too easy. Then, then we're going to have casuals using Blender. Arr. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It's pretty super sweet. Uh, one thing that you know, it's like R.I.P. Every tutorial made in the past ten years, and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
that that's just reality. Uh, Michael, yeah. I, I know you're listening. Michael immediately jumped into our <laughs> show notes because I've never seen somebody get defensive about software, but that boy gets defensive about software. Um, he's like, no, you don't have to worry about that because apparently you can turn on something that, listen, mm -hmm. this is going to be reality. Classic. the old classic yeah. key map. It's key basically map. the old yeah. keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> that's great because people who are reading tutorials know keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is pretty cool though I look forward to it because I might finally be able to use my Turing and VN code yes Yeah. which mm. you know I, I've not been like oh this is horrible because I got a thread wrapper but still it'd be nice not to heat the entire house to render things um, good times mm -hmm. Pedro do, or, uh, have they sold you or you finally become the uh, 3D <laughs> artist that you've always dreamed of I don't touch the art stuff. That's Nori's <laughs> thing. <laughs> I do the computer stuff. She does the art stuff. That that's but, our jam. But but you do the cooking, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> no art. Cooking is a science. <laughs> cooking is a science. <laughs> oh yeah, you it's true. alchemy. <laughs> <laughs> it can be an art form too. <laughs> No, see, the baking of cakes is an art form, and uh, Nori bakes the cakes. <laughs> this is why you have a few of slinkies. Um, <laughs> good on them. Uh, I look forward to playing with this. I haven't had a chance to reason. My biggest issue, it's not even an issue with Blender. It's, it's, it's I, I've said this multiple times. I apologize. Is I only learn Blender for a day at a time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if my life is going well, I only have to do that like twice a year and immediately forget. So I, next time I have to figure out how to blender, it's going to be more <laughs> interesting because we're going to need new tutorials. Anyway, on the topic of blender real quick, internet outrage, Pedro. Oh yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. Epic games supports the blender foundation with wait for it. 1.2 million dollars. <laughs> yes. So, uh, if you were asking the million dollar question, the answer is blender. Uh, and yeah, it's, um, you have blender themselves saying, thank you very much. And then you have this quote of, uh, Tim Sweeney, which says open tools, libraries, and platforms are critical to the future of digital content. And to that, I say, oh, isn't it wonderful to be human, to be, uh, <laughs> susceptible to the level of cognitive dissonance that goes on in Mr. Sweeney's head. Yeah. So, uh, you know, my opinion, awesome. That's great. It's actually awesome that uh, Epic is actually giving Blender the money instead of using it to buy exclusives for the Epic store. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Kudos. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and, I'm glad they're yeah. doing good with the Angel. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say the Unreal Engine benefits from Blender via open source animation and rendering plugins and 3D modeling assets, um, just like all the other 3D animation softwares do in the industry. So it behooves them to, you know, fund Blender because guess what? Guess where most of the models for the Unreal Engine come from? <laughs> Blender. <laughs> Unity so, Assets Store. Unity, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being honest yeah. <laughs> pirated unity assets but whatever well the, a lot of those come from blender again unity yes. is a, not not good at modeling most of the assets for unity oh, no no we were just saying where they come from yeah no you, you said where they come from it's like yes oh, oh I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a thing um yeah the internet uh, i think there was an attempt at some meltdown it's like we need to attach this to the exclusivity stuff that epic's doing that i don't think anyone's really a fan of outside of them there's no way to do that you can't tie this into the blender this is this is just good this would be like the same thing it's a blender foundation these are solid people they're like hey thanks for the money and just like if somebody walked up to us and they're like here's fifty thousand dollars same way with the blender foundation and it's like but hey we need you to do slam doors like peace out it's like, here's your money back. Goodbye. No, no, they're not getting their money back. <laughs> That's the difference between us and the Blender Foundation. We're going to keep the money and just keep on doing what we know. So don't worry about it. It's going to be just more, more good stuff coming out of them, and it's good for them to have funding. Speaking of funding, yep. beautiful people. Uh, if you like what we do, we're commercial-free. Uh, we don't even have ads on our web zone. And uh, 
You're making that possible. We have 115 beautiful, beautiful people financing nuts. Just the show, everything we do on Tuesdays, everything we do on Thursdays, and that big show we do on Saturdays. Uh, that's brilliant. If you come to Patreon, you get access to our... We get a Discord, don't we, Pedro? Yes, we do. We do? And uh, it has Yay. two text uh, channels and four different audio channels that <laughs> uh, people uh, will hang around at some point. There's even a creep chosen that you get special access to. Uh, you can Shh, totally... Well, it, now you spoiled the surprise. Yeah, you could totally creep on us while we're setting up. <laughs> we do, man. That thing we... Uh, that is like a big thank you for you know it was like hey man if you just like want to throw some money at us we're like come on mm -hmm. have it back no it's like yeah we're starting this so you get to listen in come on <laughs> we do that uh especially for saturday an hour by the way we're doing the um link steamcast weekly an hour earlier but an hour before that we go live we cut on mm -hmm. the um audio channel and discord so you can hop in and participate and that's just what we're up to what we got planned on going behind the scenes type stuff that we do each and every week and uh that's really cool. Uh, interesting community we have. <laughs> Very awesome. chill considering like <laughs> just the randomness and just the scope of differences and personalities. Everybody getting along. We have yep. IRC that everyone's on live. We don't do paywall that, but we do have the uh, mm -hmm. separate channel that's not tied into IRC. So you can kind of like hide out there with us the other six days of the week and pretend the internet's a nicer place than it <laughs> actually is. But Jill... Yes. So we have uh, mostly Linux uh, is uh, donating to us via LibraPay, which we've uh, reinitialized. And thank you again, mostly Linux. And we have a new person, David, um, also donating via LibraPay. <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that is something... I was very happy to see we cut that back on last week yeah. with a Libra pay and, um, you know, anytime you, cause we set up all the financial stuff on the back end, which was took half a day and, uh, that's a good way to get in touch with us and let Fire us up. continue doing stuff. But Yay. in the spirit of being open, we do have a Amazon thing. Uh, if you're curious about anything that's in the studio, hardware wise, like, how's this thing? You know, you're looking like, what's that? There's that stand right there so yep. <laughs> if you're curious with the networking the video electricity storage you can do it um or just ask me and i'll help you out and if you're curious about stuff we plan on buying we do have a wish list that's excitingly boring things like tripods and <laughs> computer cases so ooh, that's a nice carbide case though I just want a square <laughs> box. There's no other reason. It's, it's like, a stool. It it totally looks like a stool. I've seen one of those. You think I'm joking? IRL. <laughs> the thought of like, that'd be good for shelf space over here. <laughs> <laughs> to put Jackbox in that. So, uh, and thanks everybody who's uh, donated stuff uh, from that Yay. list. Uh, oh, just, we couldn't do it without you. That's you. You're like game shark, like cheat mode. <laughs> and uh, we do the best we can and pretty transparent about what we spend everything and everything goes back into the show. So that is uh, cool times. Anyway. Yep. Oh, hang on. We're horrible at shilling. One more. Don't hang up oh, just yet. Oh, the store. Merchandise. <laughs> store Yogurt would be very <laughs> upset if we didn't mention the merchandise. Yay. Get some <laughs> LWW shirts. Yeah. Yay. Yep. LWW <laughs> t-shirts, uh, Francophile t-shirts, some hoodies. <laughs> Uh, not very, you know, seasonal, at least in the Northern Hemisphere for the hoodies, but hey, if you're in Australia, Australia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can get some, uh, winter wear. I'm guessing it doesn't get all that cold in some parts of that particular country, but New Zealand, <laughs> that's gets... further south. So yeah. <laughs> Dude, Tasmania. <laughs> yeah. That's like yeah. Australia Does anyone live in Tasmania? Mode. Yeah. Like four people. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they okay. know each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep being awesome, everyone. And thanks for letting us uh, do this weird, weird experiment. And we Yay. <laughs> gotta get into a slice pot. We're running out of time. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, awesome. Yummy. That looks really good. So this is Hacker Pi. It is a 32-bit Kali Linux for the Raspberry Pi 4 has been released with a 64-bit version soon to follow. 
Wonderful. Um, Kali Linux has been always been so great at porting their security focused software to the Raspi ARM SOC, and the four is no exception. And what's really cool is this new Kali will support onboard Wi Fi monitor mode and frame injection support for the Pi 4. So that is a first and really, really awesome. It, it, it's, you know, just helping the Raspberry Pi um, in the security arena that much better. Just awesome. That packet injection and everything <laughs> else working out of the box with the Raspberry Pi 4. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> I can see the articles coming. Read the Raspberry Pi found near some yes. bank. <laughs> and that bank, ladies and gentlemen, was called NASA. Yeah. <laughs> True story. Go look that up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even back when, like, backtrack. That was my. Oh, look! There's a web oh, network, yeah. and I, mm -hmm. I need to get on the internet thing but nowadays it's like 30 War seconds driving. of ivs's <laughs> yes. and away we go <laughs> i still have a dongle that does packet injection you're like why do you have that it's like <laughs> reasons which we don't need that because you know hey man magic internet's everywhere now and soon we'll have space internet and in our brain mm -hmm. meets controlling us uh good yeah to see. actually the, like Kali themselves they support just about everything they have the uh mm -hmm. Kali net hunter rom for yeah. Android phones, mm -hmm. where it's just, oh, it's mm -hmm. Kali for a phone. It's just one yeah, of the reasons I want a awesome. Nexus 5. <laughs> so, yeah. you, so you're going to be like, ring, 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 banana Kali. <laughs> ring, 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 DDoS. <laughs> you, you hack her, but you run like three arches. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one distro I don't have on any of my laptops. <laughs> and, and OSX. <laughs> I have a VM of that. <laughs> Last week we talked about the most adorable heatsink for the Raspberry Pi ever made in the history yes. ever. Tiny. It was like a little baby Hyper 212. Yeah. <laughs> and you might might actually, if you didn't just buy it already, now you got an excuse to. This comes from notebookcheck.net. All of this in our show notes. Go check it out at your leisure. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation brushes off uh, that the Pi 4 has a temperature problem. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I'm gonna, well, let's see. The rival da, 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 has been a run up, right? It's Lon's CDAX. Uh, yeah, okay. It gets warm. All right. It, it, if you're running it at full load, <laughs> It has an integrated heat spreader to, as a piece of metal over the IC. But yeah, that's going to get hot if you're running at full tilt, period. It's going to throttle, period. Oh, yeah, especially mm -hmm. if you have yeah. an ARM64 quad core running mm -hmm. at like 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz. Yeah. Yeah, they get hot. <laughs> And, you know, the Raspberry Pi 3 had overheating issues as well at launch. Oh, no, it didn't. And I've never yeah. seen, I've, nope, I've never <laughs> seen heat. Jill, what are you talking or, about? No, 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 it didn't. No, just quit making stuff up. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> depending on your use case. And um, I actually, Raz Raspberry Foundation used to recommend a heat sink and fan, and many of the Raspberry Pi 3 kits came with heat sinks and fans. And I'm sure uh, Raspberry Pi 4 kits will be no exception. And we'll be seeing those soon. And I have actually had heat sinks on my Pi 3s as well. So just in case to be careful. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, yes, yes, the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi 4 does have a temperature problem. The Raspberry yeah. Pi 3 has a has temperature, temperature problem. problem. <laughs> like, you see this uh, little <laughs> IHS here? That's the SOC. That's mm -hmm. all it's got for cooling. Of course it has a temperature problem. If you yeah. remember last week when we talked Actually, about the teeny know, tiny I, I, little... I'm going to say, to be fair, it doesn't have a tem temperature problem because it throttles accordingly. A temperature problem would be if it was <laughs> Yeah, it's not a fire. problem because yeah. it's throttling itself. It does throttle itself, yeah, and powers down yeah. or overheating. But yeah. the, uh, that little um, tower cooler that we talked about for the Raspberry Pi last week... Uh, it, they specifically said it's like, yeah, the Raspberry Pi 3 B plus will hit 80 Celsius without even, you know, breaking a sweat. Mm -hmm. And with that thing, it cuts that temperature in half. So, yes. Any kind of heat sink will help a lot. <laughs> 
I think it's important to just stress that the Raspberry Pi <laughs> Foundation has the right response. They're like, this thing's not designed to run all out constantly. It's not the right yeah. use case for it. To which you should respond, touche. I'm going to go buy that adorable little heat sink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to uh, call out the Raspberry, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, they didn't do anything to dissuade people from writing articles like, the Raspberry Pi 4 is your new cheap desktop CPU. Is and that, also or desktop computer. <laughs> it's like, no, no, it isn't. It, it, it's, a, it's a prototype board. It's a mess around I, thing. I, I, I honestly don't think the Pi Foundation has editorial control over bloggers, <laughs> Pedro. I mean, this might be news to you. But... I'm sure they have a press kit that they send to some people. They would probably send one... You could prompt... Uh, you could literally walk <laughs> and pick one up. I could up. probably walk into their office, knock on the door, it's like, yo, you got a press kit? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's better to sit on the internet and just theorize about what might go on. Anyway, beautiful people, we gotta get out of here. Um... If you would like to send us a note, tell us what's going on in your life. If you have some questions, hints, thoughts, allegations that you would like to share with us, how can they do that, Pedro? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you could send us a pigeon uh, with Pigeons. a little flash drive. They're yes. delicious. Yes. Uh, actually, pigeon rice is... I, I grew up poor. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah the, best, the best way to do it is to go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. Make sure in the little show box you pick LWDW because uh, that's where we get your feedback. Mm -hmm. You can also send some hate mail mm -hmm. for the uh, the Saturday show or some ask Jordan for some relationship advice. <laughs> that boy, right. Dude, I mean, <laughs> stay tuned for that. We have an absolute wall uh, coming up this Saturday, so that should be interesting. All right, yeah. we got to bounce out of here. Uh, you are awesome. You are beautiful. So much so that we got to roll the credits and... Aww. Thank you for it. <laughs> Allegedly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《
jumble into layers. Couldn't you just like skip a step and pop your head in the microwave? Pretty much. Yeah. Same That'll sag you right out. <laughs> Viral aging. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I if I like rock and roll with my mom's genetics. I've been pretty much stuck looking like this until like sixty two. Then I go blind. <laughs> ah, well, you could be Asian and still you like hit 60, you look exactly the same. And then you hit 60 and you shrink. Like... <laughs> Stereotypes, Pedro Matias. <laughs> I'm Portuguese. I get old and I get... Um... <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's a Portuguese thing, man. I don't know if you guys got that one on lock. Bald and fat. No, nope, that sounds like a dude thing. <laughs> and uh, with air jutting out of my nose and my ears. So, like you said, air. <laughs> gotta get a Throw that H in there. It was a silent <laughs> H. Uh, uh, the H is silent in hour, as in it's been an hour. <laughs> That's because it's English. It's a jacked up yes. language, man. Uh, yeah, I keep having those talks with Dave and Nathan. It's like, okay, so you write it as Worcestershire and you read it as Worcestershire. Gotcha. Uh, you write it as Leicestershire, and you read it as Leicestershire. Gotcha. Again, uh, I apologize Why isn't anybody. it called Winstershire, then? Yeah, <laughs> this, is a very, this is a conversation, anybody, that we've had to learn English. We can have this conversation. <laughs> it's legit. Native English speakers are like, what are you talking about? And I was like, it's because it's always been that way. And chances are you only speak English, idiot. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's Winchester. Okay, then why is it not Worcester or Leicester? No, no, no. It's Leicester just be, listen, man, and it, Worcester it's and England. Winchester. Just be glad it doesn't have a shire on the end of it. <laughs> I live in the Cambridgeshire. <laughs> what could be Worcester? Shire. <laughs> yep. Worcestershire, Leicestershire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See you, Arthur. All right, Diana Fire. And I should actually um, go as well because I need to cook dinner, and this one's going to be a bit more involved. So you guys have oh, fun. What, <laughs> what you making, Pedro? <laughs> I am going to make some. Well, Nori is going to make some guacamole. I am going to uh, make some steak and some chips. That's neat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nori's going to open the good. jar, and you're going <laughs> to make some steak. Uh, no, she's going to make guac. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what she told you? I bought the avocados. She better. <laughs> Probably in the trash. <laughs> she said she would, so. Well, I, I, listen, 100%. I understand people not wanting to make guac, but the, the only ingredient is smashing the avocados, man. Blender. The yeah. actual kitchen appliance, not the software. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you, everyone. All right. Okay, bye, Pedro. Have fun, Pedro. You can just bail on us like that. It means you're going to have to talk, Jill. You can't sit okay. there. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorceress. So you're going to have some good exercise, huh? How long are you going to walk today? Nine to ten miles. Awesome. I did that on Monday. I probably walked about Probably about five miles. <laughs> Putting avocados in a blender would make it too smooth. I guess you got to put it on the rough setting. <laughs> so. No. The only thing you put in blenders are tender hearts. Oh. <laughs> and watch them See, spin I, around. I have... I have never liked guacamole. I like avocados plain. <laughs> I just like avocados. I don't know. I mean, I have had guacamole I like, but it's it's rare because I don't I don't like it the texture of it. 
But you're a picky up. eater, man. Come on. Yeah, I am. <laughs> That's uh, how are you on food touching? You got that? Food touching, like other can, people's Can your food? peas touch your mashed potatoes? Oh yes, yes. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Dude, I I got a friend, I got a friend <laughs> like that. Hard. Like she straight up has like school lunch trays. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen people do that. <laughs> I have yeah. too. I'm like, all right, that's your thing. <laughs> oh, okay. It just seems like something I would have to. I'm not picking on anyone. Like, whatever. Well, Doesn't you know, when me. I was a, I was a kid, it it, it would have, but uh, not not anymore. I like to mix everything together. I've kind of gotten that from Steve Husband. <laughs> I like all the flavors to come together and like the Mediterranean food and whatnot, where you mix it all together. I just love that. Do you hear that Mediterranean just accused that entire area of eating nothing but goulash? Like, yeah, you just mix it together. <laughs> Mash everything together? No, no. I, I just eat whatevs. <laughs> like, got no problem with it. Yeah. I'd put everything in a bowl if I can get away with it. That's just because I don't like doing dishes. Ah, uh, yes. We use little paper trays, <laughs> like the ones we used to feed our kitties with. <laughs> Why do you hate the environment so much at the uh, Reichner household? <laughs> Reinecker. <laughs> Sweetheart, as much as you butchered English during the show, I'd tap yeah. out of that argument right now. <laughs> and it's Reinecker for the Rhine River. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh... Paper seriously use that Steve, you use paper plates. Uh, no, it's just it's it's actually better than having to wash every dish for our, our kitties. So it's it's it um I'd rather use paper than use too much water. That's why you get it use so. a sink. <laughs> well we do that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I like washing dishes, but I wash my clothes by hand if I can get away with it. Unless it's like um, bed sheets and stuff like that. That's too much work. That goes in the washing <laughs> machine. Yeah. <laughs> in the dryer. Yeah. We have a wash uh, um, dishwasher, but we never use it because it's just me and Steve, and yeah, we don't really need it. Well, where do you keep the extra dishes? <laughs> no, we, ours are actually stacked in the cupboards properly. <laughs> so. Well, clearly with all the paper plate usage. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, man. It's like, oh, <laughs> you can get to dust the plates. You're like, they're just here for show. <laughs> a falafel. What's that? It sounds like a waffle with a lisp. Mm -hmm. Isn't that like just like a wrap? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Falafels are the only um, Persian food and Mediterranean food I do not like. Um, actually, I, I have had ones I've liked, but for the most part, I don't. Um, but I like everything else. I like spanakopitas and baba ganoush <laughs> and grape leaves. <laughs> Man, that looks like a diseased biscuit. Well, you know, they're actually can be really good, but sometimes what what ha ends up happening is a lot of the restaurants put too much spices in it, which I don't like. Um, but if it's light, if they're light on the spices, then I, I don't mind them. Yeah, like Steve Husband said, most are awful. There's It's hard to find a restaurant with good falafel. Well, I mean, if you put enough ketchup on it, though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we have we have found a couple of uh, restaurants with waffles that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I I would try that, but after just looking at these steps to make that, I'm good. Maybe I can buy some canned falafels. No, that would not be good. <laughs> but they would be soggy, just like I think I'll like them. Ew. Yeah. No, like you have to have them crispy. <laughs> nah. 
crispy. The best ones are crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. One of those weird. Do do you like crispy pickles? Yes, I love pickles. I love dill pickles. (laughs) No, I love dill pickles. I don't like the crispy ones though. Oh, oh, you mean tomato uh, uh, pickles? Uh, No, I mean the pickles that say they're crispy on the label. Mm. (laughs) Hmm. There's like your regular dill pickles. Sweet potatoes. Uh, sweet pickles. Sweet pickles. Dill pickles are different. <laughs> yeah, I don't like sweet pickles. Those are otherwise known as uh, hamburger pickles. Crispy dill pickles. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> if that's on the label, that's uh, they, they should all be crispy. <laughs> so... <laughs> It should all be crispy on the outside. Vlasics. Yeah. I love Vlasic pickles. Those are the ones that are like crispy, crispy. Mm. Like they snap. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. You get like a regular <laughs> dill pickle. It don't snap. It bounces. <laughs> yes. It's pickled. <laughs> Strategy plants more bowl shaped. Yeah. It, it looks like it's just like blended up. It, 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 I don't know, a spicy hush puppy. It is kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm going to go into it. Give me a falafel and ask if they have tartar sauce. Hmm. Actually, I, I, I've known people that, yeah, ate them with that. <laughs> I'm just, all right, then I got to find out about the restaurant that they go to that has served falafels and fish and seafood. Well, uh, well, Mediterranean um, has a lot of seafood too, so I've, yeah, I've been but to restaurants. Yeah, a lot of tartar sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did, I uh, didn't know that was an indigenous to the Mediterranean. No, no. Um, uh, yogurt sauces um, and garlic sauce. Actually, yeah, falafels and yogurt sauce and garlic sauce are, and hummus are pretty good. Steve, brother, I'm trying to help you out, man, give you dinner ideas. <laughs> yes, yes, we love our yeah. We eat Mediterranean a couple times a week usually, because it's it's one of the healthiest uh, foods to eat. It's got a lot of lemon and lime in it. Of the takeout <laughs> food, it's the healthiest. Yeah, <laughs> well, we <laughs> it's not. I don't consider that takeout food. Oh, it's though. takeout food. Come on, I don't well, lie we, to myself. Don't lie to yourself. No, we take out from actual restaurants. We don't usually that, go to that's fast what food, takeout food. food is. Yeah. Restaurant food. But not fast food. <laughs> I didn't say fast food. I said takeout food. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, some fast food places deliver now, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, all of ours deliver on the app, on one of the apps. Oh. Well, I know there's like, <laughs> uh, not TaskRabbit, what's it called? Uh, Grub. Yeah. Thing. Grubhub. Yeah. Yeah. And there's uh, Uber Eats. and Yeah, Uber there's quite Eats. a few of them now. Yeah. <laughs> When you need the ride to show up with a snow cone. Um, yeah. <laughs> and some french fries. Oh, yeah, Ellen. I can't stand Long John Silver's. Too greasy for me. <laughs> like, oh, that's... Man, that's like the only chain seafood restaurant, isn't there? There's another <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I guess Red that lobster. would be... Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Red Lobster is a restaurant, I, but <laughs> I know about Red Lobster is they have cheesy biscuits and people really like them. Yeah. <laughs> Munchies deliver here. In, I bet you do. Oh yeah, Munchies. <laughs> Pretty cool. So what do you got going on this afternoon, Joe? Before we get out of here. Um. Uh, I'm gonna play with my uh, RX 580. Hacker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, go to some chores <laughs> and eat lunch. Eat lunch. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do to your 580? Oh, I might do some more blender renders on it and then um, see if it will actually fit in my new case. That that might be an issue. <laughs> so you, it's, it's big. <laughs> did you get like a little Lilliputian case? No, no, it's just a, it's a um, micro ATX case, but it's a little smaller. You got a little Lilliputian case. Yeah, a little pink, cute, pink case. It's the first time I've ever had a smaller case. And, um, 
Yeah, so I'm not sure if the RX 580 will fit. Oh, my idea down. of a smaller case is one that doesn't come up to my knees. My knees are pretty yeah. off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the thing is this is one of the smallest cases in here. As How you do you see. not step on it? <laughs> because I'm short. It comes up to my knees, even though it's I, a short case. I would, I would be scared if I, I, I accidentally, like, seriously, one of the reasons I wear, like, sandals around the house is so when I kick things on accident. Oh, yeah. I don't You're wreck them. Yeah. See, I wear, I wear socks around the house. <laughs> See, if I wore socks around the house, A, I'd have, like, debris in my feet, because <laughs> the piece of glass that fell six years ago, I'll find oh, it. Oh, <laughs> you'll find it. <laughs> I don't care that I sweep and wax my floors, but, yeah. Um, and if I have boots, if I tap something, just phew, shatter it. Yeah. You've never no, kicked, I, like, I that think... case? No, I am very coordinated. And very careful, and and part of that is because I, I see out of one eye, I have to be a little more careful. So. Well, listen. <laughs> in order to establish dominance with a new case, you need to kick you it have, a few times. You have right? to kick. You gotta let it no. know it's bust. <laughs> no, I'm I'm too OCD to do that. <laughs> I don't want to hurt its feelings. Oh no, I don't want to get things dirty see that's that's my thing i don't like i like my computers in here even the ones that are 30 years old look like brand new <laughs> well, the computer's not got on they should <laughs> oh they're they get lots of work i'm just very it's careful. not like they run out back in the evenings and play <laughs> i mean oh look at you you've got no filthy get back and we're gonna get you <laughs> no but that's why i leave the door closed in here and um I never, I never open the windows in here, and it keeps everything dust-free. The insides of the cases stay beautiful because of that, and no dust accumulates. I only Ladies dust and gentlemen, once in a great while. This is where we do the science lessons, and then <laughs> almost all <laughs> dust is skin cells. <laughs> so unless you're not in there, <laughs> yeah, Ben. <laughs> oh, you, you can start wearing a bunny suit. No dust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's where shot. <laughs> Clean room. Oh, yeah, Pennyway. So right now I'm just using, because um, my, my other uh, broadcasting rig had died. So I just... Did you kick I it? Just, and, and no, it, it finally just, the power supply died on it and and took out the motherboard. It was an older motherboard. So I was expecting it to happen. Uh, I knew it I, would. Uh, so... I, I don't know. I, I thought you were going to be like, in the power supply died. And I was like, oh, I better not say anything. That's what she told Steve. And he thinks you have to replace the whole thing. I don't want to get you in trouble. But no. Okay. Oh, <laughs> no, it actually did. You know, the that was a older server motherboard. And it was, you know, time. I, I knew it, it was Old. on its last legs. Yeah. So, um, but the one I put in the new case is just a um, fifth gen uh, Core i7. But it, oh. it's a pretty nice, nice processor. Pa pa uh... Apparently, <laughs> Jordan disagrees with the statement of the clean room. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan? <laughs> C. <laughs> oh, Jordan! <laughs> I hate when Discord did, my Discord didn't scroll, so I missed that until just now. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I got you back. Yeah. <laughs> Man, clean rooms are, yeah, like legitimately anything <laughs> to do with it. The um, like HEPA filter. It's not that. It's the other people that are yeah. in there, like hovering over you, and like don't do it, and they're like leave me alone. Yeah, I'm very, very, very OCD about that. I don't even like Steve's husband coming in here and touching things, but. <laughs> Jordan, take that as a compliment. You got it to come in here and get all over everything. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know about Jordan. Jordan, Jordan, just, Jordan was like, it's not that clean. <laughs> yes, it is. It's very neat and tidy and not much dust. But I just, I have a lot of things in here. But I got, I, that's because I need to install cabinets and whatnot and i will get around to that eventually i worry about you jelly bean we got an earthquake it's gonna take you out in that room just <laughs> i know <laughs> well everything's low to the ground so including you help. yeah 
Ben Vince. I'm just saying, man. Ben Vince. I don't want Steve to get home and be like, Jill, where are you at? Yeah. That's why if we have an aftershock, I might take out out the door if it's a big enough one. Actually, I did during Big Daddy Linux. Mm -hmm. I was on the air. It had an aftershock, and you could see my they could see my lights flickering and everything. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, I, I just acted like nothing was happening and and went on with the podcast. But <laughs> but the, <laughs> I told them why you know I had my my lights flickering. But the nice thing is, is my UPS works great. It's the same one you have been, and so Which that'll one? help the 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 tall skinny. Um, I got two, three, four. APC. Yeah, it's the, the your your tallest one. That's the one I I. I have right now and um the apc works great and it, it it kicked in and didn't without a hiccup so that that's a good great. feeling isn't it yeah I mean, like, and, ah, and, i know that works and my internet this is the first time that i've had my fiber internet you know i, I have internet now um hooked up to the upc but this is the first time that we had a power outage mm -hmm. and the internet didn't go out Cool. They, they're doing something right <laughs> with with fiber with the cable it would go out and mm. remember that's happened during the show like in the pre-show when i was setting up before the cable would go out but with the fiber it, it doesn't go go out so yeah we're coming they nice. probably don't have any battery well they probably have flat batteries attached to whatever distribution node you're on yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah all right, so mm -hmm. so we know you're power proof. If you're like, oh, the power went out. I had to go. Well, no, you're telling the fib. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not anymore. I mean, no, I don't. Not anymore. Not oh. No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it. Um. No, Van. <laughs> when it would go out before it actually would die, my my cable would die with it. But now, no. Uh, no, that's good because I know last time it went out, it jacked everything up. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm really happy this the high fiber just just having 300 symmetric up and down is amazing. I love it. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's almost four. Almost five o'clock. Yes. I gotta go. <laughs> okay. Make the donuts. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, okay. Hopefully I'll see everybody Friday. If not, it's been mm -hmm. real. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Yay. See you next bye, week. Bye, everyone. Love you.